Absolutely. So joining me on my show, I feel really uh, privileged because I know you don't do a lot of interviews. So obviously your real name's Ryan, but a lot of us will know you as uh, Connor in the Ascension in the uh, WWE. So thank you so much for joining us uh, in quite a rare interview for you. Yes, it is. I, I keep myself very quiet for the most part. I, I always fly under the radar. That's what I try to do. You know, I just pop up sporadically in places that people don't think of. <laughs> <laughs> And we, we were just talking before the interview there about um, you're not a big social media guys in general where no. a lot of wrestlers are and they use social media to kind of build their name and the, their product essentially to, to help get bookings. But you just like the, the chilled life. Um, but it Very doesn't chill. stop you from having some good projects. You kind of, I know you're not allowed to say too much, but you've hinted uh, there's some exciting stuff coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't like to give too much away because then, you know, I've always believed that wrestling's all about surprises. It, it's to me, it's always. I think that's why I've I'm not not so much that I frown upon social media because I think social media is a very important tool for us, for us all to have. Yeah. But sometimes I think we let people in so much that there's no there's no curiosity that's left. There's no more um, uh, there's no more surprises. There's you know there's no more mystique. And I think to me that I think that was the one of the most greatest things about wrestling was the mystique you know when you get too close to wrestlers and you kind of get to know who they are and then you start to lose that mystique in their character and who they are and for me you know like I would like to try to keep some of that alive I know this interviews like it's a very rare thing for me but uh it's also kind of like lets people into my life a little bit yeah. but I won't let them get too close <laughs> and that's not a good thing to hear as an interviewer <laughs> <laughs> So I wanted to go back really to the very beginning for you, which is where your love uh, and passion for wrestling actually come yes. about. Was it something you've loved since you were a kid? Did it happen by chance? You know, how did it start? Yeah, great question. Um, so for me, um, when I was growing up, I, uh, my, 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 my father loved wrestling and I used to sit there and I used to to watch this stuff a lot with my grandfather we really got along um with watching old vhs tapes go figure that out right <laughs> and um you know we'd watch some 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 wrestling here and there and then you know as time went on it started just becoming a part of our life where you know you only had four main extreme pay-per-views back in like the 80s you know which yeah. again to me that's what made pay-per-views so special now they don't for me they don't feel so special so what we would used to do is we would have big family get-togethers and and there would be there'd be heckling and fighting and and stuff that made it fun you know and uh um yeah for me i just i kind of grew up around it i didn't i'll be honest and i've told a lot of students this that i never thought that i was ever going to be a professional wrestler i wanted to be a pro football player um i was actually pretty good um in football believe it or not even though i move like an ogre <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and so and so i started realizing like it would bring my family close together and it was just something that was really cool so needless to say fast forward a little bit i started playing football i got really into it um this is when a, the original xfl came out now bear with me um this is a very touchy subject right <laughs> so um, I had a buddy of mine who said, you know, you should think about trying out for it. And I was like, hey, it's not a bad idea. You know, that, that could be, you know, that could be fun, um, at least to try out to say I did it. So, and I'll never forget his name. His name is Don Hernandez. Great guy. And um, one day he called me up and he's like, hey, Ryan, he goes, man, listen, you should come help me. You know, I'm doing some landscaping in some professional wrestler's backyard. And I go, oh, that's cool. If you need a hand. Yeah. You know, I didn't think nothing of it. Right. So I go there. I help the guy out. Um, and Lord and behold, walking out the back door, you'd never believe this was Sergeant Slaughter. Wow. Right. And so for me, I didn't think about the wrestling aspect of it because I was more of a GI Joe guy. Like I grew up yeah. watching GI Joes and He-Man and you know, that, that was my era. And so I'm looking at Sarge and I'm like, Whoa, this is Sarge, man. Like this is the coolest, this is bigger than life to me. And he's like, hey, kid, with that big old chin of his. And <laughs> just looks like you can never knock him out, you know. And, uh, you know, we did some work. And uh, I just told him, like, man, you know, I've just it's really cool to meet you. I grew up, you know, I, I, had, your, I had your little G.I. Joe figure. And I just, I made you kick everyone's ass because that was just, I was just, man, I was a Sarge guy, you know. 
and uh, I didn't give a damn about Duke. <laughs> Duke and Scarlet and all them. I didn't care. Sarge was great. So anyways, he asked me, he goes, hey, have you ever thought about um, getting into professional wrestling? And I go, no, not really. I go, I love it, but I never thought about getting into it. And he goes, you know, you should maybe think about trying to do some of these little independent local circuits and this and that and, you know, and see what you think about it. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I didn't think much about it. And so basically one of my buddies, he went to, he, some guy approached him, met him, and they got into the wrestling aspect of it. Then he gave it to me, the, the, let, the, the phone number. And then next thing you know, I'm in Rusty Brooks's backyard training. And, and that was how I kind of got into it. And I, I've loved it ever since. Loved it. It's, it's, I can't imagine life without it, to be honest with you. And obviously, you know, going on to make such a big name for yourself, did you ever speak to Sergeant Slaughter kind of when you made it and to say, look, you know, did you bring up the story of meeting him and everything like yeah. that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, and I'm one to, I'm, I'm very honest and I, and I will definitely call it for what it is. So the main roster run wasn't so great, obviously, and that wasn't within our control. We all know that. At least I think we all do. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so one day I was, uh, it was after WrestleMania. I'm not sure which one it was, but it wasn't too long ago. And Sarge was sitting at a bar and it was a layover in Miami. And I remember walking over to him and I go, oh no, I, <laughs> I'm not letting Sarge sit by himself and have a beer by himself, right? So I sat next to him. Now, Keep in mind, my mindset's not kind of all there. I'm not very, you know, I'm not too excited. I'm not too happy. And I literally grab a, grab a seat and I sit right next to him. No eye contact, none whatsoever. We're literally looking right up at a TV. And it was a, it was a, there was a game that was on. And Sarge, you know, drinking his beer. And he knew. And it was the craziest thing. And he just, he just kind of goes, hey, kid. And I go, and I'm drinking my beer, and I'm like, hey, Sarge, not no eye contact. And I go, hey, Sarge. He goes, yep. And I go, hey, you remember that time when I was in your backyard and uh, I was uh, working on your landscape? He goes, yep. And I go, hey, you remember that time you, you told me about, you know, maybe getting into professional wrestling? He goes, yep. And I go, yeah. And he goes, do you hate me yet? <laughs> <laughs> I go, that's, kind of a bitch. <laughs> that's actually a real nice story it's like quite like a rom-com oh, <laughs> i can visualize it's, that in the film it was great i wouldn't have had it any other way you know he's he's a big part of kind of like how i started even thinking about becoming a professional yeah. wrestler so um yeah it was uh you look back at it and you really appreciate those times and those moments and and uh and it's just something you never forget and i know i mean going back to your first run in wwe you had done the independent scenes before that so how did your first kind of break in wwe come about were you approached did you go through a like a, a performance center thing how did that all come about no so uh, and again i i'm going to be blatant and very honest about this i got lucky like straight up i got lucky i knew somebody um who wrestled on the scene back uh, in the time who knew somebody and that somebody being Tommy Dreamer, who was ahead head of TR at that time. And this person um, that I was speaking with, uh, Riptide, I don't know if you've heard of her or not, no. um, but she had trained at Rusty School here and there. And uh, we had kind of gotten a, you know, a pretty good friendship. And uh, one day I just said, hey, hey, Angel, do you think that there's a possibility that, uh, you know, it's worth taking a shot? Because, you know, I've been training for a couple of years here and there. And she's like, yeah, send me your info and I'll send it to Tommy and we'll see what happens. And I was like, okay, cool. So I sent the info and, uh, and that's kind of how it all kind of uh, trickled in uh, to how I became uh, a professional wrestler in WWE. It was just a matter of knowing somebody, you know, and it was, I think during that time, it was, uh, you were sending tapes in, um, and it, you know, I know there were some people that thought, oh, the WWE scouts here at this show today. Yeah. I'm like, man, shut the hell up. There's no such thing as that. And there wasn't really, you know, so you had to take the ball in your own hand. But for me, it was just, it just happened to be someone that I knew who I sent that information to. They took a look at it. They liked my look at that time. And it was just, you know, all up from there. 
And for you, obviously being a fan of wrestling before, was it kind of a bit of a novelty that you'd be backstage and see some of the wrestlers that you've watched on TV for years? Was there a little bit of a fanboy moment for you? Yeah, I think I think that happens with everybody uh, to some effect, especially if you're not like a second or third or fourth generation wrestler or whatever it is. Because yeah. then when you're that, you're you're you know them like you've known them forever, you know. But I was never that. I was you know first generation. So for me to go back there and see guys like Hulk Hogan and you know to see you know Kevin Nash, um, Scott Hall, and guys that you know you watch you know growing up, it's just. Uh, it's cool, you know, Shawn Michaels. I mean, the list just goes on and on. You get this, The Rock, you know, it's just, you just never s- stop seeing, you know, people that you've always admired if you really love this business because I think when you truly love this business, you appreciate everybody, no matter from top yeah. to bottom. Iron Mike Sharks to, you know, to, to all the way to your Hulk Hogan's and, you know, your Kurt Angles and whatever. Like, you just, you appreciate everyone. At least I did. And you seem like such a chilled out guy. So I couldn't imagine you, you, you speak to some wrestlers who have had beef with certain wrestlers and backstage yeah. arguments, but I couldn't imagine you being involved with that. You seem like the sort of person who would just say, do you know what, not for me and walk away from it all. Yeah, I, lay back. I ain't got nothing to prove, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm always one of those guys that, and you can ask anybody that you interviewed that knows me, like I, I, I stay pretty humble. Um, I always try to help people when I can. Uh, I I really believe in being able to look at yourself in the mirror every night. Like that's just one of my things. And, um, and that's just something I want to pass on to my son too. Now I'm not saying that I don't, you know, I don't occasionally, you know, go out and I'll party with the boys and stuff, you know, but that's just, that's just the nature of the business. But for the most part, I stay out of trouble, man. I just, I don't, uh, I don't want, I don't want to tarnish my name because of getting caught up in a moment, whether it's be someone that I don't like or, and, and I mean, I think there are times where you look at people and you think, man, it's a selfish son of a bitch, you know, and it's, yeah. but in the same, re- in, in the same aspect, you still really appreciate them for, you're, you're working with their body, they're trusting you, you know, and that's, and that's important. So I've never had beef. I don't really care for that. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's just child's play, to be honest with you. You know, if, if you want to fight, let's go fight and afterwards we'll have a beer. That's, it's that simple for me. I don't hate people. I refuse to hate people. I, I just can't. Do you know, I've got to say about looking in the mirror at night before you go to bed, you have the best teeth in wrestling. They're like the <laughs> nicest, whitest teeth I've ever seen. I was looking at them for a wrestler. They're just like bang perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's about the only thing that's decent on me. I mean, I'm sure that my, man, I... Yeah, I got the face for radio, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going to your second, uh, obviously, successful run in WWE, when that came about, did it feel like a second chance for you? You know, that you could, because you would have learned, I guess, from the first experience. So going into it, yeah. do you know what to do and what not to do? Yeah, yeah. So great question. So going into it the second time, um, there was a lot of growing up to do, obviously, because you've got to start taking. You got to start. You got to start realizing what your priorities are as you get older. That's just what happens as we get older. We start learning what's important, what's not so important, and things like that. So I knew that going in a second time, not only did I have to prove myself because it, it, you're going to have to prove yourself whether it's the first or second time. But I think if you get in a second time, you're going to have to really prove yourself. And not only that, but you know, if you get in a second time, that's that's rare, man. It's very rare. So you know, you got to make an impact, or you've got to make some sort of uh some sort of impression you know and uh and that was my mindset going in the second time and you know being a little bit older thinking wiser um being young you know you you just don't you just you just don't think about things like that so it took a lot of growing up to do for me um and uh and it was just it was a good it was a good thing it wasn't a bad thing it was a really good thing you know we all got to grow up sometime and and you know, that second time around, I knew this is a rarity. This doesn't happen very often with most yeah. people. So I just want to make sure that what I do for as long as I can, I leave somewhat of a mark. And the thing is, for as a fan watching the product, um, at times, WWE became a little bit stale, lost its way um, at times. And the NXT came about and it was just like a, a refreshing moment we were seeing real wrestling again and yeah. it got everyone excited so to be part of that side of things 
Do you think that helped you, you know, in the fact that you were able to showcase who you really are and actually connect to the audience? Yeah. The thing with NXT, what was so great is that first off, you wanted to build a good relationship with some of your peers there that are in that upper echelon, like Dusty was there. You know, he was had a big say in NXT. Um, Hunter, uh, at the time, Bill DeMott. Um, so you wanted to make sure that, you know, when you were there, you wanted to have the right impression and they wanted to know that they can, they can trust you, you know? And, and so for me, it was, uh, it was just another rarity, but this was an opportunity to let you be you. And then that's, and I really emphasize on you being you because any, any fan can tell you and they can see, and I'm sure you're thinking about it right now, that there is that possibility that when you, when you do go up to that main roster and, and we've seen it, um, there can be some changes, you know, and, but that's the, that was the beauty of NXT um, is that you got a chance to go out there and, and do what you do and be who you are. And to me, that was what was so great. And it was, you know, just above and beyond of any expectations for wrestling, because usually you're kind of in this bubble to where, okay, I need you to do this, say this and do that at this time, you know, so. And it, the fans feel a little bit different between the two uh, products at times, because it's like, I think if you're a fan of wrestling, NXT is what people love. But if it's more the yeah. entertainment side of things and the nostalgia and the gimmicks, then I think for entertainment wise, it's WWE. And for you in, in NXT, you've got to demonstrate both. But I wanted to talk about the Ascension and when they actually brought that to you, what were your initial thoughts and reaction? Did you think, you know, it was a good thing? Did you have any doubts? I hated it. Really? I hated it. Yeah, 100%. I hated it at first. And um, when it first got presented to me, it was, it was, I want to say it was the day after I got booted off NXT season five, you know, the NXT that we'd like to yeah. flush down the toilet and forget. Um, <laughs> and I'm just being honest. <laughs> um, but of course, you know, they repolished the brand and it became what it, this, a monster that it is today which is amazing right so when I came in I was already defeated mentally because you know you don't know if you're getting kicked off the show you're publicly humiliated basically I mean you've got to have a little bit of pride when doing what you do so I remember coming in that next day and I think it was Bill DeMont and he came up to me and he said hey listen uh we've got a we've got a direction for you and we want to try this out and I go okay sure uh, what, what are we looking at and he goes, well, Ricardo Rodriguez is going to be the head of this thing. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I love Ricardo. So that's not a shot at Ricardo. It just, it just kind of, all this is just kind of blindsiding me because I'm still thinking about the night before, yeah. you know, and I'm already kind of a little, you know, I'm ticked off a little bit and, uh, but it's business. So, I mean, these kinds of things happen. So got approached to me, Ricardo was in charge. And then basically they gave me the layout of the original. This is, I'm talking about the very first original Ascension. It was five people. And I remember sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, who, who, who's it going to be? And the presentation happened. It was Ricardo, Shaw Guerrero, um, Tito Cologne, um, and Brom, um, Tom, Thomas Latimer. And then there was me. And I remember looking around and I just, I, I didn't see, I, I was like, man, this is, this is horrible. Like, how, how do we mesh? Like, none of this makes sense to me, you know? And um, they were just like, give it a shot, give it a chance. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to do what I'm, what I'm told to do because, you know, I, I play by the book and that's fine. You know, I'll do the best I can do. Was I happy? No. So and I'll, I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. And this whole thing was kind of crazy. And this is when we started turning into the gothic dark. And this yeah. all happened in a promo. One, one morning this happened. True story. I text uh, Ricardo because Ricardo was on the road, and I want to say he was out in California. And I said, hey, man, listen, we got a promo to do. We got promo class this morning with Dream. I go, what, what should we do? What, what's your direction with this? He goes, talk about the ascension and what it means to you. And I said, done and done. Okay. So then I just mass text everybody. I said, hey, guys, listen, Ricardo said this. Um, uh, now I'm thinking business. Everybody wear black. Let's look business and let's just go in. And then we went in that morning and 
of course, you know, the eye candy was shawl that, you know, so you put shawl in the front sheets, you know, that's just the way bands, it's anything. It's, you know, the women are always in the front. And so you put shawl in the front and then you start spreading this out. And then one line, that was all it was. One line, one line, one line, one line. Everybody hit it. Dream comes walking out with his dip can in his hand. And he just, he looks around and he just, he's doing one of these and he goes, I want you all to come in here. I want you to take a look at this. And we all got out of the ring and we're like, oh man, we really screwed up big time. So they replay it and he goes, tell me what you see here. So they replayed the video and we're watching it. And I go, I don't know, a bunch of jack offs. I, I don't know. <laughs> You know, I, I really yeah. didn't, I didn't know. And Dream goes, I see a bunch of vampires. And I go, oh, okay, well, I can see that. Then, okay, I, I'm starting to see this direction. And Shaw goes, yeah, like True Blood, because at that time, True Blood was the big thing. And uh, he goes, yeah, like True Blood. And he goes, and this is, I swear to you, this was insane. He looks at me and he goes, Ricardo ain't supposed to be in this group. I got to call him up. And we're kicking him out. And I go, oh, no. I was, like, <laughs> no. I was like, he gave us the direction, you know. So that was how that all began. It was just that one morning. And it was just, we all wore black that one day. And it just happened to pop. And it looked good. Tell you what, we got, I've got to acknowledge that impression of Dusty Rhodes is insane. Oh, Dream's the man. I, yeah, I got I got pretty I, I love Dream, man. Rest his soul. Man, I love him. He was so good to me. Um and obviously I want to for I think a lot of people in regards to the um success of, of uh, the group is when it was two of you. Um when yes. it just became two. And I think it just made more sense. Um because I think a lot of times in factions it's got to have chemistry and natural chemistry happens organically and you two work so well together. So what was it about you both that made you what you think stand out oh uh, okay so now my next question is going to be which two because there was one me and me and brahm and there was me and vic vic okay yeah yeah so vic vic's a lot like me when it comes to we're well first off we're yin and yang now i'm just going to tell you right now that and i tell people that that's just how we are um half full half empty that's vic he'll tell you you know he he's just vic you know he's awesome um, so I think that in that aspect, we complement each other. Yeah. You know, for me, and this is the way I've always viewed it, what made us work and gel so well together was that Vic is a technician. And for me, no one's really able, no one's really had the chance to see how good Vic really is, you know, and I know that. Um, and if you go back and watch um, in the NXT days, you can see how good he was as opposed to what you saw within the past five years. He's nothing like what, you know, what that version was of him. Vic can go. So I've always looked at Vic as a technician. He's the guy who helps uh, put some of the matches together. Um, I'll input maybe a couple ideas, but I felt like I was more of the visionary. Like I could see. So the ascension that you saw with Vic and I, that was mm -hmm. that. We can still, still see. I'm sorry. I'm the, yeah, I apologize. I just got, I got a frick. I was on a roll too. I'm all excited right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, so for me, so that, so that version you saw Vic and I, that was mine. That was what came out of my head. The black eyes, the scaleras for him, um, the book, the, that was just something that we collectively came up with, with dream. And, and, and truth be told, like dream, you had to bypass all that with dream and you had to sell dream on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and dream loved it and dream would put more ideas into it. And, and the big coats and all that, like that was everything I saw. And I was just like, this is the way I want it to be. The, the big grand entrance with the dark lights and, and everything like that. To me, it was just, it was mystical, it was mysterious, and it made it different. And that was, that was what, where, I, that was where I play in with it, I feel like. And I think that's how we complement each other so well. And I've asked Vic many times, Vic, what was I supposed to do again? And I mean, well, I'm thinking about how, we, how I want our presentation to look, you yeah. know, but he's got, he's got the technician, the, the wrestling down like, like nobody's business. And that brings it back to what you said at the beginning and, you know, actually staying true to yourself because you said you love that style of that mystique, being mysterious and yeah. having the audience wanting more. And not, so I think that kind of stays true to what you've always believed uh, in wrestling. Yeah, yeah, less is more. I've always been a firm believer of that. I think if you keep it mysterious and 
um, I just, it just draws people in, you know, it just, it makes them want more because it's, it's so different. It's, I mean, the undertaker is so mysterious and so unique, you know, he's so like, he just draws you in and granted the, the entrance and all that, and he plays true to his character and everything. But the presentation, when you first see it, it's like, oh man, like this is incredible. You know, you don't see him on yeah. Twitter all the time. You know, you don't, I mean, I don't know about now, but I mean, back then you didn't see him on Twitter. You know, he just, he kept everything true to what he was. Did you have any interactions with The Undertaker? Did you ever oh, yeah. go, go to him for advice or anything? Yeah, I, first of all, I love him. And yeah, he, he, he is the judge and the jury, without a doubt. You know, um, he, he always called me Big Stiffy. <laughs> <laughs> that's not not the best nickname to have <laughs> yeah well it, it, it depends i guess I, yeah good point um but, um, but you know I've, I've i've sat down with him before and had coffee um and you know i've talked to him and you know some of the advice he gave me he told me you know stay true because the fans will know if you're not and and you know and that's one thing that i've always believed is that you don't ever want to insult their intelligence and that being the fans um, so that was a really good piece of advice that, you know, the taker gave me. And it's something that I'll always, um, I'll always appreciate. And if it's anything that I can ever pass on, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I'll always pass on is always stay true to who you are. Well, I was going to say, a lot of people that I've interviewed, um, and we talk about the Undertaker, they say what a presence he is backstage, almost like yes. a, a role model. So would you, would you agree with that? Would you say he's kind of like that role model, almost like a father type uh, role? Oh man, he's, he is, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, it's hard to explain because you, you, it's like, if you have any questions, you can always go to him. He's very intimidating though. And I think a lot of people, because of his position and because of, you know, who he is, you know, it, people are intimidated by that. You know, and there are, and that doesn't mean that nobody talks to him. Granted, people talk to him and, and he gives, he's there to help. Like he wants to see the business succeed without a doubt. And especially WWE, because that's, that's him. That's who he is. Yeah. He's always been you know, loyal to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and as he should, you know, and then, and because everything that he is and everything that was created with him was through that company, you know. Well, I was talking of, um, you know, you said that he at times would be like intimidated just for people to go over to. What yeah. um, Brock Lesnar is someone that strikes me as a person you wouldn't want to approach backstage, especially yeah. when you hear various stories about him. Did you ever have any conversations with him? Because I, you, some people say you just have to walk past him and not talk. No, just uh, with Brock, it was just very professional. It was, you know, how are you doing, shaking hands and stuff like that. It was never, never any big interactions, you know. Um, Brock has his people that he talks with and he's got his people that he doesn't talk with, you know, it's just, it's business. That's, that's what it is to him. And, and that's how it should be, you know? Um, so yeah, there was never really any interaction with us between him and I. Um, but I always respected him, you know, absolutely. You always respect somebody like that too. Cause yeah, you know, that guy like that could break you in half. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think you're someone that could as well. I don't think I would want to, Pick a fight. Um, but going back, you, you admitted earlier, you know, honestly, that the, the transition from NXT to the main roster wasn't yep. what you guys would plan. So do you think Absolutely. they moved you too early? Um, I don't know. I, that's, a, that's a really tough question to answer. I, I don't know if they moved us too early or if they, if they just didn't allow us to be what we are. Yeah, you know, and I think that was that might have had a big part of it. And I remember, I remember, and I'm going to bring this back to Dream again because Dream was really upset um, about. I just remember him yelling down the hallways one morning when we were in the PC, and um, he was like, "They're turning my my stint in, into into Egyptians," and and I didn't. We didn't know. We had no idea what he was talking about. And so when we got the call. Um, from Stanford that day, um, Hunter had made some some explaining and some things. And he goes, "Congratulations, basically, um, Creative has an idea for you guys. This is the direction we want to take you guys." And uh, Dream was sitting right to my left. I'll never forget it. And Ryan Katz went and he got 
the photos. They they sent him the photos through email and he printed them up. And Ryan Cat slid the photo right in front of us, but facing down. <laughs> and we have all these photos, but they're all facing down. These papers all facing down. And, and then Hunter's like, if you flip it over, you'll see what the direction creative has for you guys. And we flipped them over. And I go, oh shit. <laughs> and Dream looks at me and he goes, Egyptians, I told you. And I go, oh no. Like, and then and then I'm like, not the road warriors or you know, not yeah. guys like that, because man, there can only be one road warriors. There can only be one demolition. There can only be one powers of pain. You know, and those guys were huge. You know what I mean? Like those guys are 300 plus pounds. You know, at that time I think I was 270 and Vic was. 230 maybe at that time and i'm like oh no like this is but you know what this is getting us up to the main roster um it's giving us an opportunity you're not going to say no i don't care who you are like no one's going to say no to that because yeah. the goal is to get out of nxt or it was to get out of nxt to go to the main roster because that's where the big money was at you know and i don't know how how much it's changed now because i haven't been part of nxt in a long time um but but i i that was the one thing that I remember thinking when all that went down was I was like, man, we can't be us. You know, it's, you know, we're not going to be able, we got to, we got to cut promos and we got to yell and we've got to scream. And that's not who we are. You know, if you ever met Vic, like he's so, you think I'm chill. He's so chill and he makes me look bad. <laughs> well, I was going to say that it's kind of a common thing sometimes with uh, WWE when something works. So whether they get someone from the Indies and they, they come over mm -hmm. and they are hugely successful, they kind of go to WWE and then it just falls apart. They're not the people that we all fell in love with at the indie shows. And sometimes it's the same for NXT. This talent goes yeah. over and you're hyped because you followed them. You followed the journey. You, it's organic. Then all of a sudden they've changed because you know it's an entertainment show on a bigger scale and you kind of lose that identity and then i guess you're losing that connection with the crowd and the original fan base yeah because that's what they know you as right like yeah. they they see they see who you are when they first fall in love with you or start to like you or whatever it may be and then they see this transition and then they're going to be like wait what and then another confused yeah because they're not sure of what's going on. Now, what I can say is luckily, I feel like we were the guinea pigs for that and I could be wrong, but luckily I've noticed that they stopped doing that to a lot of the guys that they are transitioning up to the main roster, which thank God they're, they're doing that. They're not, yeah. they're letting them to be them. And, I, and that's such a big thing. I think it was, uh, it's the War Raiders, right? Like they, they came up and they changed their name. I remember sitting in the locker room that day and it was, God, it was like Viking experience or, Viking Express, something. And I was like, oh, no, please don't do this to them. Like, I'm thinking to myself, oh, no. And then I remember seeing some backlash on it and everything like that with the fans. And um, thank God that they got through it, though. You know, I'm, I'm so happy that they did because they're good dudes, you know. Um, but, I mean, it happens. And, and the fans know when that transition happens because they're confused yeah. now. As they should be, you know, they should be that way. Could you imagine if, like, you know, the son of a plumber debuts and all of a sudden he's like, you know, gorgeous George all of a sudden? Yeah. You know, it just it just doesn't, doesn't it make just sense. doesn't connect. Yeah, it just doesn't connect. That's not what we know as fans uh, or as workers. Like, it's just, it's confusing. And I think uh, another thing I wanted to ask you, did were there ever times when you spoke to any of the executives, Vince McMahon, anyone backstage and say, look, I'm not happy with this. I, I feel we could if we were given the platform to really showcase ourselves, we could have something big, but it's just not working. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't take a rocket rocket scientist to see that it's just not working. You know, I think when it's not working and if they're solely behind you, they're going to make it work. Yeah. Um, and there's just some people they throw in the fire and you just got to put it out yourself. You know, unfortunately, um, I wish I had a great answer for that. You know, I don't, Unfortunately, I don't. And uh, with your release from WWE, it probably, I imagine, didn't come as a surprise for you because you weren't being used the way you should have been used. Um, no. So that must have been frustrating because in that time where you weren't being used, I guess you're losing that momentum and, you know, the fact that people know you. Because in the wrestling world... Momentum. <laughs> eh? Momentum. <laughs> when to get momentum. <laughs> <laughs> but you um you know you lose all of that and i, I suppose yeah. for so many months when your name's not being thrown out there 
The worry yeah. is when you leave the company, are you going to go and have success at the other promotions? So that must have been a frustrating time for you when you weren't being utilized, the, you know, the right way. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's frustrating for anybody. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times, and I won't make no mention of names, but guys that are at the top and they don't like something, they're in the back complaining, you know, and so it happens from top to bottom. You just, you know, you just got to do the best you can with what, what's given to you. Because here's the thing, at the end of the day, if you don't want to do it, somebody else is going to want to do it. You know, don't think for one second that if the Ascension doesn't want to do the Ascension, hey, I'm telling you right now, somebody's going to throw some face paint on and throw some shoulder pads on just to get up to the main roster. It, I'm yeah. telling you, it happens. So you either do it or you don't. And that's and that's just kind of the way that it is. And that was our opportunity. And and we knew that, you know, me and, me and Vic are old war dogs. And it's just one of those things where, you know, this was an opportunity. It was presented. Did we like it? Not really. But we try to do the best we could with it. I don't think anybody could have had a lot of success with that because it just it just wasn't made for that, as the way I feel at least. Um, so. And um, for you, you know, um, a family man, to, to yeah. get that phone, was it a phone call that you had to, to give you the news? Yeah. To get that phone call and say, you know, look, unfortunately, you're, you know, we're kind of cutting ties with you. Was, that must have been a hard moment because for so many years, this has been your bread and butter. It's paid your bills. So to suddenly have that anxiety of not knowing where the next paycheck's coming must, you know, be a real tough thing. Nope. <laughs> no? Were you, you quite relieved? I was okay. I was all right. I, I think it was <laughs> – it was a very toxic relationship. That's the best I can put it. I love a lot of people that are there. I love a lot of the guys that are in the office that are there. Um, there's just it, – it just needed to happen. And it there was, a present, there was a presentation to me about possibly resigning. And I, my one question – I just had one question. And I said, why? Now, I don't know how many people would have done that, but that was my question back to them. Why? You don't use us. We sit in catering. We don't want to be there, but we're there. If you're not going to use us, you know, my mindset is let us go. Give someone else the opportunity. You know, I'm not, I'm not bitter. I'm not that guy that's like, that wants to be selfish. Um, yeah. To an extent, I do want to be selfish, but but I don't want to be. If that makes any sense, it's uh, it's like beating a dead horse. Like if you can't make the change, no matter what you do, you're gonna beat yourself up mentally. And 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 I did do that for a little bit. And then one of my friends, Fandango, he told me, he goes, "Listen, man, he goes, there's only three things that you can control in this business." And I go, "Yeah." And he goes, "What's that?" And and you know, he goes. All you can do is control the way you look physically. You can only, the only thing you can worry about is the way your gear looks and your attitude. Those are the only three things that you have control of up there. And I was like, damn, you know what? You're right. Like, that's very true. Now, in the same sense, it wasn't that I wasn't uh, unappreciative because I always, I always brought a, a pretty good attitude backstage for the most part. Um, I always tried to smile and be happy. And, and sometimes deep down inside, you know, you, you felt a little bit different. But, you know, there are, there, there are people there that are doing good and that want to be happy. So why, why make their day worse? That was another thing for me. So I want to go in there with a good attitude. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just one of those things. Do you think you'll ever go back? Because I know it's only been a few months, but can you see yourself in the future? They kind of might think, do you know what? We, we made a mistake, but that's a good idea. Would you go back for the right reasons and the right story if you felt they were going to really utilize you? Um, oh, man. Whew. Tough question, isn't it? <laughs> it, it? It is a tough question because I've been with them for so long. Yeah. I kind of know how they think also. Um, the best advice that was ever given to me through through uh, one of my peers was in this business you never say never. Of course. And and so I don't want to say yes and I don't want to say no. I just know I d I would never go back to any company under the circumstances that I just went through. 
And it sounds like you had a really good relationship with Dusty Rhodes, you know, from stuff that you've spoke about in this interview. So obviously AEW being one of the, it, it's an exciting product. We watch it here in the UK. I absolutely am addicted to it. And for me, it's given me a little bit of a love for wrestling again, that I was starting to right. lose a little bit. And has there been conversations between you and Cody about you joining them? Because I guess um, over time, he must have spoke to Dusty about you. Um, so was there ever kind of discussions about you joining AEW? Um, I've never really picked the phone up. I've never reached out or vice versa, really. Um, I, here's, here's the thing with me right now, and this is the best, best thing I can say for me, is that I just don't want to answer to nobody right now. Yeah. I've been answering to people for 13 years. Um, and and I'm, not, I'm not saying no, I would never, because I would. But, and I love Cody. You know, I've gone over his house before and stuff. Cody's awesome. And I love their, the entire Rhodes family's awesome. Um, but right now, I haven't given that any thought, to be honest with you. Like, I haven't, I haven't really thought about reaching out to, uh, to AEW. Here's the thing. Like, a lot of people are like, go to AEW. Listen, man, you can't just walk into McDonald's and, and throw an apron on and go behind the counter and say, <laughs> hey, listen, man, what can I get you to order? I'm, I'm making a paycheck. Like, you have to be invited. Yeah. And that's just the truth. You do. Um, but in the same sense, we've never reached out either, at least not to my knowledge, you know. So with with someone like AEW, I, you know, it's it could possibly happen. Um, but that's I, – I just don't know. Yeah. I, I would do it, I think, to an extent. Um, I love Arn. Arn's there too. Um, and I love Dean. You know, my trainer was trained by the Malenkos. So it's just – there's a lot of good reasons to go there. You know, but I also want to make sure that if I do do something like that, it's also something that mentally I'm I'm ready to handle again. And I think you can just get just from talking to you in this interview that you you love the business in regards to the creativity of the business, that understanding it. You're not just a performer where you go out there and do your thing. You really like to get to you know to grips with everything. So I think for you, it'll be great for you to showcase what you can really do rather than being kind of pressed in into like a box you know to actually go out there and demonstrate what you're about what you can do so maybe yeah. going on that journey could be a good thing because it seems like you've got a lot to give i got some years left i'm not saying i got a lot <laughs> but i got some years <laughs> so what's next um, for you yeah so we've got a lot of cool projects coming up Vic and i um right now we're trying to figure out our tag team name to be honest with you i know like the revival they they jumped right on it you know uh, you know uh they changed their name quick um we're still kind of like man i don't know we've came up with some names i'm like oh i don't know about that you know so uh we've had we've got some really cool i i don't want to say what they are because it just again like i would want it to be something exciting if it happens yeah. and i don't want to shoot myself in the foot and say this is what's going to happen and then uh, this doesn't happen, you know, and that happens a lot in this business too. So, but I've, I've had some, some phone calls with some really cool people um, that probably should have happened by now, but because of this damn pandemic that we're going through, it's really a pain in everyone's ass, including everyone yeah. watching this thing, you know, <laughs> but it works out great for you though. <laughs> <laughs> Getting lots of guests good for you <laughs> good for you <laughs> no I, I gotta say though um for in terms for you it'd be great to see you go out there because everyone loved you in nxt and the run in in wwe was good it just again you felt like you were trapped a little bit and we've got some a couple of questions from people um, yeah who absolutely um we, we got two of them that we've picked and one's from elliot who's actually a, a wrestler in training um, awesome and he said, why do you think the Ascension didn't do as well in the main roster? So we've kind of covered that a little bit, but in, in a nutshell, how would you describe that? Booking committee. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <I'll start laughs> <up. laughs> booking committee. Elliot, it's the booking committee, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one is another trainee wrestler called Shan. Um, and he said, do you think video packages of NXT talent coming over to the main roster would be good? Because not everyone watches NXT or has the network. So do you think if they did some more promotions would work? Absolutely. I think anything, I think anything going over into the main roster is going to help anybody. Um, the more publicity, the more hype, it, it's just that that's important. Um, but you know, too, like with NXT being what it is now and not what it was when we were there, 
you know, now they're, they're doing, you know, these big pay-per-views and stuff. And it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's crazy what it's become. You know, we didn't have that then. So I think, I think now that people are transitioning over into the main roster, it, it's working out for them because of the, the presentation that's being done nowadays because of the coverage. And, and I think it works out in their favor more so now than it did, you know, back when Vic and I were coming up. And for all the promoters um, watching this in the UK, do you like the UK? Would you like to come over? Is there anybody on the UK scene at the moment that you know about that you'd quite like to have a match with? Oh, I love the UK. Um, I, I love it. I used to love the European tours every time we came over there. It was so much fun. Um, there's a gentleman by the name of Jester who's over there um, who I just, I think the world of. Um, Soraya, the, the Knights are out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I love them, and uh, just just I, I would love to get out there. I, I love traveling. I don't know so much about right now with all the face masks and stuff you got. <laughs> <laughs> I could be the new gimmick. <laughs> Bring the dance. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> That's the new look, the new gimmick for you both. Yeah, well, right. Just... It's not bad. <laughs> no, I'm so grateful because I know, you know, you don't do a lot of interviews. So when I contacted you and you agreed, I was really surprised. Um, and I was happily surprised because See? I wanted to. Mysterious, you don't know, and once in a blue moon, I'm right there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you probably would get bombarded with interview requests. So I was kind of like, got the email. It's one of those moments you're like, yes, and you're like punching the air and you can't wait to tell everyone so thank you so much for being so honest so open and so humble and joining us on the show today oh thank you as i appreciate it i really do man thank you um so yeah i'll send you